I am so sorry if you hear my neighbors, but they're kind of trespassing a little bit over here. <laughs> At least with their music and their loudspeaker. I'm sorry, sorry. If you hear noises, I'm sorry. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my album review of Genesis album Trespass released in 1970, their second album. Some would say their first actual album as Genesis. Of course, as with most of my album reviews, you can go back and listen to my first listens and reactions to each of the songs on this album. Trespass was an album that on my first run through listening to it, I liked it, but I didn't necessarily love it. I didn't necessarily think that it completely came together as an album. But upon repeated listens, as you guys know, uh, I found that the album is actually pretty strong. I would say quite strong. <laughs> It may not be the most notable and well-recognized album in Genesis discography, but I actually feel like it's quite strong, and if not the strongest in their discography, definitely something to be looked at if you're a fan of progressive rock. To trespass, to go into places that you're not supposed to go, to tread on grounds that you're not supposed to be treading. <laughs> I feel that they kind of do this. They kind of have their own style of mixing together uh, progressive rock influences, of course, but mixed with a decent amount of folk as well. And I feel like that is really the heart of this album. And that is no doubt led by Rutherford and Phillips on the guitars and the bass, the strings, the melody arrangements on this album are amazing, so peaceful, so meditative. The string work, especially from Phillips, is stellar. I really enjoy it, and I think that that's one of my favorite aspects of this album. It's really impressive just to see what they came up with melodically. And to find that they were only in their late teenage years and early 20s when they were making this album, I mean, you gotta admit, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> I would not only say that this is essential listening for any progressive rock fans, but I would even say you'd probably find some inspiration and motivation just in seeing how well put together they were as a band, as a group, and alongside of the music that they came up with. The first song really showcases their potential as a band coming together uh, with looking for someone. It starts with Peter making a declaration thematically and musically that he is looking for someone uh, somewhat hesitantly. <laughs> The music picks up with really interesting dynamics, a lot of twists and turns as the music inflates and deflates. The melodies burst into sonic extravaganzas and then kind of come back down into softer, more mellow tones. We get to hear a little bit of John Mayu on the drums. He shows off a little bit more of his capabilities, which is definitely really nice. And then it opens up into this beautiful pastoral landscape, which is the first time that we get to hear uh, these pastoral melodies because we're going to hear them more later on but it's so nice the landscape like i said just opens up quite quite beautifully with anthony's guitar peter's flutes banks on the piano it's just a melodic masterpiece in this section and like i said this song really showcases the potential of what genesis could do and of course eventually would do and the first time that I listened to this song, I did mention that the song is a little bit stop-start-ish. It feels a little, not jumbled together, but it doesn't flow perfectly. You know, the big moments, sometimes they deflate and, you know, they don't feel as big as they could be. And while that still rings true to an extent with my feelings now, I do feel that it comes together quite nice uh, compositionally and musically. And I think that is probably a quite underrated track. White Mountain is probably one of the stars on the album. I love its ethereal opening. It opens with this beautiful snowy soundscape that you get with wind blowing and it's pretty much a musical establishing shot uh, for the song. I love that deep bass that reverberates, almost like shaking the snowy mountains and the dark caves. <laughs> that bass just echoes beneath rustic melodies of old. You can imagine a battle about to take place between these famed warriors. <laughs> the only thing that holds me back from really, really loving this song is the drums and it actually kind of is one of my small complaints throughout the album is that while the drums are good i feel like they could have been a lot better it's in songs like these where i don't feel like mayu really felt comfortable he didn't feel flexible on the drums and as a matter of fact uh, his drum work for example on this song kind of still comes across a little stiff that hasn't really changed uh, in my opinions and even though i think it's adequate 
I think it could have been brought to another level. But regardless of that little complaint, the song is very innovative. It's amazing in what it does and what it sets out to do, uh, bringing together story and sound, and the battle is really something to be listened to. The ending whistling is a really nice touch into the song. It's a small detail, but it's the small details that make the big picture. And like I said before, this is the type of song that really showcases to you what they could do when they were so young. Visions of Angels is one of those big, melodically pleasing kind of songs. Uh, you got the moving bass by Rutherford, the calm and calculated transitions into the big and grandiose chorus. Visions of Angels. Tony and John really lead the song into a symphonic assault uh, with a lot of power. It ends in a really big and nice exhilarating climax. And even though this isn't one of my favorites on the album, it's a pretty good song. And you know, something that I just thought about is I haven't really mentioned Peter's vocals. Absolutely fantastic, especially in a song uh, like Looking for Someone in that isolated section. He's the one that sets the opening for the album, and he sets it. His singing throughout White Mountain is intense, sometimes with a little bit of snarl, sometimes just narrating the story, and even Visions of Angels. He has a very heavenly and divine voice when he chooses to sing in that way. Stagnation is easily, easily, my favorite song on the album and the highlight of the album to me. I'm actually not even going to spend that much time talking about this song because I feel like this one speaks for itself. The gentle and compassionate guitar from Anthony is absolutely beautiful here. This is one of those songs where I feel like that pastoral beauty that I mentioned before really comes together. It really showcases Genesis style in bringing about those melodies and getting into these nice, big, powerful moments. I love the organ. Banks, what he's doing in here is magnificent. I wouldn't change a thing about this song. Peter's calm and quiet vocal delivery is amazing. Accompanied by Mellotron, which is always welcome in my house. <laughs> and the backing harmonies are chillingly beautiful. It's just one of those journeys that you have to take, you have to listen to. If you haven't listened to that song, you should be listening to this album review if you haven't listened to that song. But if you, if you haven't listened to that song, give it a shot absolutely beautiful. Dusk is a song that on my first listen, I wasn't really in love with. And I'm still not in love with it, but it's definitely grown on me a lot. It is a perfect ending and follow-up to uh, Stagnation, that epic journey. Dusk being the darkest part of Twilight before the night comes, the music really actually feels like that. It feels like the last light of the sun just over the horizon is about to set and fade away. It's humbly and darkly serene in its soundscape, the vocals from Peter are soothing, calming, relaxing, and not only does Peter sound great in this song, but even the background scening, who I believe is Anthony and Tony, is very enchanting and warm within these wintry tones of the music. We get a nice little flute solo that reminds me of Ian Anderson. <laughs> within the soothing atmosphere, we get nice drifting waves of Mellotron once again throughout. And yeah, I originally overlooked this song a little bit, but it actually is uh, charmingly hypnotic and it actually lulls you in uh, before leading you into the next song which is just you know <laughs> but dusk is actually a really nice song i actually really enjoy it like mentioned after listening to the soothing and meditative dusk the knife literally just cuts through <laughs> starts you on a totally different path as the strong organ and these riffs just come out uh, from the distorted guitar and cut through the music. Peter's aggressive call to arms in this song is a standout before it breaks into a really, really nice chorus. Band up and fight for you know it is right. We don't trust that the lies they have spread like those disease through our minds. It is just a fantastic chorus. I really like how it gets you going. And for such a heavy verse and chorus in this song, the break is actually a really nice and peaceful retreat. And eventually from this peaceful retreat, it eventually builds into a marching chant and a pace as the cries of we are only wanting freedom begin to rise and other voices rise as well using violence to silence those cries and that execution is perfectly captured by genesis the music once again reinvigorates itself and it is showcased with gravitas respect and weight it's a phenomenal bridge in the song that i actually think is one of anthony's finest moments on the guitar and to an extent the solo and the guitar work kind of edges its way a little bit towards psychedelic rock. Once again, showing the diversity that they already had on their second album that would spread into their future albums. And then the final lyrics are actually very chilling uh, as a new power rises to overtake the old, uh, perhaps being worse than the last one. So that was just a little song by song review on my current thoughts on the songs on the album. But let's move on into my favorite moments, my favorite lyrics, and my song rankings. 
for a trespass. My favorite moments on the album, if you haven't guessed it and if you haven't watched the video, go back to Stagnation because it's on Stagnation. Uh, it's when Banks is turning his organ on and off again on that solo when it's like, And it goes, wow. Like, I love it. First of all, all the music around it is so beautiful. It's so serene and just, it's really like, it's like a starry night. And then Banks, what he's doing on the organ there is just, it's a simple method. It's so simple, just turning the organ on and off again. But when he turns it off and that little pitch bend happens, it's so magical. It hits me right through the sternum, right in the heart. My favorite lyrics on the album are from The Knife because the Knife has fantastic lyrics. I'll give you the names of those you must kill. All must die with their children. Carry their heads to the palace of old. Hang them high, let the blood flow. Now in this ugly world, break all the chains around us. Now the crusade has begun. Give us a land fit for heroes. Now. I think that those lyrics are really interesting because as far as I can tell, this is supposed to be from the side of the good guys or the freedom fighters. You know, the ones who are rising up against this dictatorship. But I don't know about you, but the lyrics are kind of <laughs> a little bit graphic. I'll give you the names of those who must kill, almost die with their children, carrying their heads. Is this freedom? And then I had to include the last lines of the song as well, uh, where the pronouncement is made. Some of you are going to die martyrs, of course, to the freedom that I shall provide. Freedom is fought for, but sometimes the winners could be worse than those who lost. And in the end, Maybe everybody loses. And then getting into my song rankings for the album, you guys already know, Stagnation, White Mountain, Dusk, Looking for Someone, The Knife, Visions of Angels. I don't think that there's a bad song on this album, actually. I think they're all really good. I would say that those top, top three are probably my favorites on the album, but it's a really nice journey to take, and I think that most of you guys will enjoy it. While I think the drum work is a little bit lackluster in a lot of the album, I don't feel like it's necessarily bad, but it would be later on when we had the addition of Phil Collins that I would feel like the drums really begin to take place and really begin to grow. And while it doesn't quite reach the progressive heights that their future albums would, this album showcases all the potential and sometimes it not only showcases the potential, it showcases the heights that they reached and the things that they've achieved. And for a band this young to have been putting out music like this at that time, that is something that I think would be very inspirational and motivational. Anyways, it's a great album. It's a pleasure to listen to. Of course, I would love to know what you guys think of the album, though. You can join me on Twitter. You can join me in the comments down below. For anyone that this is their favorite album, please, I would love to hear why. I would love to hear your song rankings. And this really goes to anyone. Uh, I would love to hear all your song rankings, your favorite lyrics, your favorite moments throughout. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can do that as well. But if you've enjoyed my company, I've enjoyed your company, and I hope that you're having a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.